Good morning. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit as we join together in our call to worship. Hungering and thirsting, we come to the Lord. Jesus is the living bread. Feed us with your love and healing power, O, God, o Lord. Give us the bread of hope and compassion, that we may also feed others. Praise be to you, O Lord, for your compassion for us. Praise be to you, O Lord, for your steadfast love. You may be seated. And welcome. Welcome to First Parish Church, Manchester by the Sea. We gather this morning in the presence of God, and you are welcome here. If you come here often, or if you've not been in church in a very long time, if you are full of faith, or if you don't know what to believe, if you can hardly keep from singing, or you can, if you can barely face the day, you are welcome here. In fact, we couldn't do this thing called worship without you. Your presence here makes glad the heart of God. I invite you to turn to the announcements in your bulletin. There's a lot going on. We've got a call on the back for our upcoming art show. And we were pretty busy this weekend. Hmm? Bethany's going to give us a little report and announcement following the fair yesterday. Good morning, everyone. Boy, it's been a long time since I've been up here, huh? Thank God for her. <laughs> um, you saw the fruits of the um, yesterday's open house here, the chalk drawings, the prayer wall. I've been hearing stories from people who were staffing yesterday, how many people came by, how many people took tours, how many people shared their stories. Just the Holy Spirit working in this church is, is just mind-blowing. And then people walked over here, over to our chapel hall, to our fair by the sea, second annual. We probably had about 40 people lined up at the door. Um, all the volunteers were told, you know, brace yourself for a stampede. And we had the most energetic, joyful day of volunteering those of us who were hanging out together, the people who came in greeting people that we haven't seen in a while, the nostalgia of people saying, oh, this reminds me of my grandmother, or <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it just, I, I probably should do this next week when I'm, my mind's a little clearer, but um, it, it was just something, and we, are so grateful to have been part of the community, the big event that the, um, the festival by the sea, the community of faith, the community of our friendship group, the community groups that we will be um, sharing the blessings of yesterday's fair with. We'll be making a donation to the, um, the building fund at the Legion and towards the senior center's um, development uh, what items that haven't been sold will be donated to the Second Glance, the thrift store that then feeds the open door. Um, some of the things that we received were not um, categorically appropriate for the fair, but we've got a big, big bag of maybe a dozen winter um, blankets, and we're going to have knit in them these cute little labels with a dove that says, Blessings from First Paris Church, Manchester by the Sea, and they're going to go to the homeless shelter um, that action runs. So whomever uses them in whatever condition they find their life, they'll, they'll know that we're with them. We've got um, articles of clothing that will be going to Beverly Bootstraps, to Second Glands. We've got coats that we'll share with Sacred Hearts um, annual um, coat drive every year. So these are our missions. This is what we do. And boy, did we do it well. And I get very choked up at this wonderful community of people that I've come to call my friends. Um, I'll go over to the chapel and open it up for one hour. I'm leaving at 11. But anybody who didn't have a chance to, um, to come by, um, 
or who have been eyeing something that they hope is still there, come on by, take a look, and um, in, in the coming days, the beginning of the week, Nancy and I will be coordinating and reaching out to people who might be able to come by and will fill their trunk and they can scoot up to the open door. Um, I'm sorry, to the second glance. Um, we don't need to make appointments. They know we'll be coming throughout the week. But um, just uh, thank you. It's dangerous to name names because there are so many people involved, but especially Bethany and Nancy and Jean and Mark and Jane and Mary Ellen. And, you know, I could just keep going on and on. So many people pushed, pushed together to make this happen, not to mention the folks from our church who were helping other organizations like the library and the museum. And there, it was truly an incredible day of being out in the community. And so thank you all. God's blessings on all of you. I, I told Bethany I couldn't make it home without bursting into tears in the car. So it was just beautiful. <sighs> Let's pull it together. Okay. <laughs> and let us continue our worship by joining in our opening hymn, Please Rise in Body or in Spirit, as we sing Glorious Things of You Are Spoken, number 307. <laughs> may be seated.
and will you pray with me? Generous God, whose giving knows neither measure nor end, we confess that all too often we have kept our own hearts, hands, and minds firmly closed. Forgive us for those times when our own wants and wishes have filled the horizon to the exclusion of all else and made us oblivious to the needs and concerns of others. Forgive us those moments when the fear that sharing what we have will lead to our own impoverishment has kept us silent and still when those around us are in need. Forgive us for those situations when seeing only a problem rather than daring to dream a solution has left us fettered and powerless where we might have been building your kingdom. Forgive us, holy God. Help us always to feel think, and act as those who know the hope that is rooted in your generosity and grace. But Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The good news, therefore, is this. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. May we share the peace of Christ with one another. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rebecca Shrimpton. I wanted to give you a, a little context for the anthems, the two anthems that I'm singing this morning. They're African-American spirituals, and they were uh, collected and uh, arranged for classical piano and a classical voice by Harry Burley. Um, his main name that may not be familiar to you now, but in his day, uh, at the turn of the century, the last century, the previous century, he was one of the foremost composers in the United States, recognized uh, not only for his original art songs that he wrote, but uh, also for his solo baritone uh, singing. He was a classical singer. And best of all, and most lasting of all, the fact he was the first composer to collect uh, spirituals uh, the music of African-Americans coming out of their 
experience uh, coming out of slavery and then into uh, the American working force. Uh, the music that they created, and he brought it into the classical realm. He felt that it deserved that dignity, and he was right. Uh, it allowed all of our culture to participate in that music, to learn and appreciate that music, and it became the foundation for all of our contemporary music, both classical and especially popular music. So I wanted you to have some idea of the framework for these pieces. Uh, when Harry Burley was a student at the National Conservatory in New York, which at that time, it's no longer uh, extant, but at that time it was considered one of the most prestigious music conservatories in the world, he was there on full scholarship. And uh, as a student, and he was also working on campus um, doing manual labor to help you know, pay his way through school, uh, he came to the attention of the director, Antonin Dvorak, who was here in the United States during for several years as director of the conservatory. Um, he overheard Harry Burley singing spirituals to himself while he was doing his work at his job. And he said, what's that? He ended up having Harry come and sing over and over and over again. He wrote these down and he said, this should be the foundation of American music. And lo and behold, it became thus. Uh, he also used that music as the foundation for his New World Symphony. And we have uh, Harry Burley to thank for that symphony. This is My Way's Cloudy.
We've come to the time in our service where we lift our prayers to God, trusting that God hears our prayers spoken and unspoken. If at this time you'd like to share a joy or a concern, I'd invite you to do so. Barbara has the microphone so those worshiping at home can hear our prayers as well. Uh, yes, uh, we have a joy this weekend. Our son Christopher is visiting from Seattle to celebrate his mother's birthday. And so we are very glad. I have a, I have a concern. I need prayers for my friend Suzanne. I um, texted her. I hadn't heard from her for a little bit. And she called me back. It was 1030 at night. She said, why did you text me? I said, I was just thinking of you. She said, I just had a cabbage. And if you're not in the medical community, you might not know that's a coronary artery bypass graft. And they want to send her home early, and she doesn't feel like she's ready. And she was so occluded, and she's open now. But boy, she's got a long road of healing. Suzanne. I have a joy. My baby sister, Jean, is here, but not sitting with me. I'll figure <laughs> that out. And I have Sue Martin O'Hill from Syracuse. Please welcome her. Welcome her back. <laughs> well, to celebrate my birthday, not only is Chris here, Steve's brother Bruce is here, and an old friend in the Yenta who actually match made Steve and me was supposed to be here. She slipped in the airport in Boston upon arriving from Sacramento, she's 85, and broke her patella. So she is at MGH awaiting surgery. And we're going over there this afternoon. <laughs> so prayers for D or Deanna. I have I big fat joys. I've got two of them right in the back row. <laughs> My, they're not big, fat, they're joys. They're just big joys, but they're small people. No, my, uh, my niece, Abby, is here from Arizona, and my brother, Adam, is here from Arizona, and my mom has joined them in the back row, and I'm so, they've been here all week with us, and it's just been spectacularly wonderful. And our friend Finn is here today. He'll be heading off to boot camp shortly, and we're so glad he stopped by. Finn, we are so proud of you, and our love and our prayers will be with you wherever you go. Uh, we have a joy and a concern in our family. Jeff is the baby of three boys, and his eldest brother, who's a minister, his dear Candy passed away a couple of years ago, and David just called and said he's getting married. So that's very exciting, unexpected news. And um, prayers, please, for Jeff's next oldest brother, who was just diagnosed with kidney cancer. Just a huge joy for yesterday, and I'll do this without crying. Thank you, thank you, Bethany. <laughs> and another huge joy for our soprano soloist. I'll do that without crying, too. And um, there were people at the fair yesterday that I was behind the jewelry table, and they were saying to me, wow, people aren't grabbing and pushing and shoving and... People are just calm and kind, and I heard it from like several people that there was a nice crowd, so prayers. Let us, let us, sorry. Okay. 
Let us pray all together. Holy God, we gather today as a body of your people from different ages and stages with varied gifts and passions, unique histories and circumstances yet united in our shared faith, our living hope, and the strong bonds of your love. We come hungry for the food that we need to receive, the words of challenge and encouragement, the greater sense of purpose and the call to action. Jesus, bread of life, feed us this day, we pray. As we've been reminded of your power and your promise to provide, we pray for those who may be facing practical struggles or uncertainty about their future. May they find comfort and strength in your promises, knowing that you are a God who never fails. Today, we lift up prayers of thanksgiving for many wonderful visitors, for, uh, for Christopher, who's visiting for Marty's birthday, and for um, Sheila's sister, who's with us, and for Sue, who's here from Syracuse, and for Becky's niece and brother, and uh, did I miss anybody else? Lots of wonderful visitors that we give thanks for today. We pray, too, for uh, Betsy's friend Suzanne, who has recently had heart surgery. We pray for Deanna, who broke her patella. We pray, too, for Finn, with thanksgiving that he's with us, and we ask your blessings on him as he goes to, off to boot camp. We pray for Jeff's oldest brother, who's getting married, and for his middle brother, who's facing kidney cancer. We give thanks for Becky's music and for the joy, the great joy of our fair yesterday, when so many people were touched by the hospitality and the love and the light of this place. We lift up, too, the prayers left on our prayer wall yesterday for a granddaughter who needs safekeeping, for healing for Diana, healing for Carol's cancer, and God's will for Deb and Amanda. We pray for Paul, who's battling cancer, for all those who are struggling with addiction, gratitude for the ability to freely worship. We give thanks for those who've come through health challenges and are surviving and thriving. We pray for Beth for Alan. We give thanks for the church clock bells that remind us to look up towards God. We pray for those who are dealing with road rage. May they know God's peace. We pray too with thanksgiving for visiting dogs. We are so thankful for all those in our families. We pray for safe travels for those on the road. We're thankful for live music, for First Parish Church, and for our community. We pray all of these things in gratitude to you, O oh God. May we never take your blessings for granted. May we seek to pass on those blessings to others, reflecting your goodness and generosity in our lives. Give us hearts of compassion, we pray, as we say all together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our reading today is from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 24 through 35. Jesus has attracted a large crowd and has performed miracles of healing and feeding of the 5,000. Jesus and his disciples then moved on to another area, and the crowd is in search of him. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life for which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the work that God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give us that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down for heaven, from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This ends the reading. May God bless the reading of his word. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of my earliest memories from church, from when I was about five or six years old, uh, was from Sunday school. We were required to memorize the Lord's Prayer or the prayer that Jesus taught us. And this was the symbol that you were really a part of the Sunday school, if you could memorize this prayer. And I remember practicing it. And we came to the line, give us this day our daily bread. And I remember thinking, well, that's kind of silly. It's just bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Shouldn't it be something more important like, give us this day our daily breath. I'm sure that's what Jesus meant. Give us this day our daily breath. So from the age of about 5 to 18 or so, whenever we would say the Lord's Prayer, I would say, give us this day our daily breath. Budding theologian that I was. But I don't feel that way anymore. For me, actually, bread has become the second most important example of what it means to be a Christian second only to Jesus. If I asked you all to go home and bake me a loaf of bread, how many of you would be excited about that idea? Well, maybe there are some bread bakers out there, but I think for most of you, like me, you would think, whoa, that's way too hard. Baking bread is like a chemistry experiment, right? If you put the wrong things together, there could be an explosion or a giant blob monster is gonna come out of the oven. You, you never know. But, in fact, baking bread seems really hard, but it's not. It's very, very simple, and here's the basic formula. Take a bowl of warm water, stir in some yeast until it's dissolved. Take salt and milk and sugar, put it in the bowl and stir it. Then add the flour. Knead the dough. Put the dough in the uh, put the dough down and then knead it again, cover it again, wait for 30 minutes, then score the dough, stick it in the oven for 45 minutes, wait for it to cool, and 
voila, bread. It's a miracle. It truly is. It's a miracle. It's amazing. So easy. And yet, when you think about it, bread. What a real miracle. So think for just a moment about the yeast. That beige little granule that comes in those paper packets. Yeast is an organism that lies dormant until it comes into contact with warm water. The water brings the yeast to life. As the flour is added, the yeast feeds on the sugars and the flour, and it releases carbon dioxide that makes the bread rise. Then the flour combines with the water to form gluten. And as you knead the dough, the gluten becomes more and more stretchy, and this gum-like substance with thousands of gas bubbles begins to fill up, and as the yeast goes to work, it rises. When the dough is finally cooked, the yeast inside continues feeding and the pockets of gas in the dough continue to expand and as the temperature of the cooking rises, the yeast eventually dies. But the gluten hardens, the dough solidifies, and voila, bread. A miracle of chemistry. And this miracle can be found in so many of the foods that we eat. Miracles of chemistry in the systematic way that plants work, or animals, or even a loaf of bread. Amazing. But wait, now think on this. The flour so integral to making our bread comes from wheat. And growing wheat takes a lot of work. First, you till and fertilize the soil. You sow the wheat seeds and pray that the birds don't eat them. Then you wait and pray for the rains to come to water the seeds. Then you harvest the wheat, which even with machinery is backbreaking work. Then you thresh the wheat and then carefully separate the wheat from the chaff. A lot of labor goes into making one wheat crop. And if you think about it, all of the people who work who put in their time and energy and sweat into our agricultural system throughout the country, who grow our food, who package it, ship it, and sell it, this bread has been a livelihood for hundreds of people. This bread is a miracle because it brought together so many people. And as we eat it, we are connected to those people who, produce, who labored to produce it, and the bread will nourish us. So it symbolizes, too, the miracles of possibility. Who knows what we will accomplish when we are nourished by this food? The story goes that St. Thomas Aquinas, the 13th century Italian Dominican priest and philosopher, was asked to perform a mass at the cathedral in Paris. Aquinas was consultant to the King of France and the Pope, so he was well-respected and one of the great philosophers of the time. So yes, when he performed a mass, a crowd turned out. And so Aquinas performed the communion liturgy, and when he got to the part about breaking the bread, he lifted the bread over his head, and when he broke it, he stayed there for hours. He stayed there and stood there, and it was a moment of transformation. One of those moments when heaven and earth collided and the spirit broke in. He would go on to tell them that it was an inbreaking of the spirit. He admitted that he had been so overcome by the simplicity and complexity of God made known to us in the breaking of the bread. This is the body of Christ, right here, present with all of us. In today's gospel lesson, the crowd 
who had just witnessed Jesus' miraculous multiplication of loaves and fishes, they realized that Jesus has left the area, so they went to Capernaum to find him. And when they find Jesus, Jesus calls them out, saying, You are not searching me for me because you believe that God sent me, but now your stomachs are grumbling, and you're looking for more food. How frustrating it must have been for Jesus to realize that his beautiful sermon illustration about God's abundance and what happens when we live into that abundance and share what we have with others had been misinterpreted by them all. So now the crowd just thinks that Jesus produces food on command. Much like their ancestors in the wilderness, they have missed the point. In fact, they bring up those ancestor Israelites who, not unlike themselves, were starving, not only for food, but also for something to believe in. Quoting from the text, they said to him, What sign are you going to show us then that we may see it and believe in you? What work are you going to perform? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. This is a defining moment for Jesus, indeed a self-defining moment, as this is about to ramp up to the first of Jesus' many I am statements, which are found only in John's Gospel, where Jesus reveals to the crowd who he really is and what his life is truly about. So here Jesus tells the crowd not to interpret the subject he as Moses, but as God. God is the one who provides the bread. Furthermore, he changes the tense of the verb from gave, the past tense, to gives. The change brings out the point of Jesus' message. Manna is not simply a story that resides in Israel's past, but an ongoing gift of God in the present. It is available to Jesus' followers even now. He goes on, For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. A note about the grammar of the Greek here, the words, that which comes down from heaven is in the masculine singular, as is the word bread, which leaves room for us to identify Jesus as the bread and as the one sent down from heaven. When the crowd responds, Lord, give us this bread always, Jesus identifies himself with the present gift of manna that God is giving the world. I am the bread of life. And so we pray that every day we might have this bread of life. Through eating our daily bread, Christ becomes a part of us, and we are hungry. We hunger to belong, and the body of Christ connects us to those who labored to produce it. It connects us to our ancestors who fled Egypt with unleavened bread and with our ancestors who've gathered in upper rooms for 2,000 years to remember Jesus. It connects us with those with whom we share the bread. Sharing bread is the most simple sign of hospitality. It connects us to all of creation, for we know that the rain that falls and waters the fields is the same water that cools our throats, coming from the same source, part of the same cycle. We hunger also to be whole. The broken bread symbolizes our own brokenness. We are broken people. We have faults and flaws. We turn from God. But in the breaking of the bread, we are reminded of God's forgiveness, that though we did not recognize the miracle of Jesus when he lived on the earth, and though we don't always recognize the miracles of God revealed to us in the world, God still loves us and forgives us and blesses us with grace beyond measure. We are not yet perfected beings, and so like the bread dough, God molds us and shapes us and stretches us and waits on us to rise. 
we hunger also for some kind of sustenance, something that will help us to continue on. In this daily bread, we find our purpose, our mission, whether it is to welcome others to the table or to fight for justice for the laborers or to transform the world in the ways that Jesus did or to keep searching for the many ways in which God is made known to us in the miracles that surround us every day. And even when we don't know which road to go, God will sustain us with the bread until we find that path. This is the body of Christ and Christ will feed our every hunger. I'd like to close this morning with a poem called Reprise by Laura Martin. Perhaps what Jesus really said was, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will share my hunger for what can be, for what has been started, for what is born in fragile places, for the unscripted love in the day's theater, for what is told in the trees that give shade and the birds that lean into the fold of the wind. Whoever looks for me will discover my hunger for children to learn the cadence of play rather than the posture of war. Whoever seeks me will know my thirst for the long drink of justice, found only if we go to the wells together and for the ways we laugh and play and break the rules all the way there. Amen. We give thanks today and every day for the meaning that God gives to our lives in and through Jesus, and for the ways God fills our emptiness with goodness. May our worship and praise and the sharing of our gifts express our thanks for God's gift to us, the true bread from heaven, even Christ Jesus, our living Lord. This morning's offering will now be given and received. train I'm a coming I hear it just at hand I hear those cartwheels rumbling and rolling to the land then get on board little children get on board little children get on board little children I hear the train a coming. She's coming round the curve. She's loosening all her steams and brakes and pull strain in every nerve. Then come on board, little children. Come on board, little children. Get on board, little children. There's room for many more. The fair is cheap. And all can go to rich and poor or dare. No second class aboard this train. No difference in the fare. Then get on board, little children. Get 
invite you to be seated and we'll join together in our communion liturgy. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and good thing to gather together our on this table, to remember that Thursday evening when Jesus gathered with his disciples in an upper room and shared a meal of love. We remember how he took the bread, and giving thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you eat it, remember me. And then he took up the cup of blessing. Giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, saying, Take and drink. This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for you and for all for, for forgiveness and grace. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Will you help me to bless these elements? Come, God, come, dive deep in these cups. Twine yourself with this bread, that this meal may be for us a taste of your grace and food for the journey. And let the whole church say, Amen. Amen. The bread that I've just broken contains wheat and egg. If those are not good for you, we have a gluten-free option available right here in the silver tray. Our cups also contain non-alcoholic grape juice, so there need be no physical barriers between you and these tastes of God's grace. If you're still worried that there may be something keeping you from this table, maybe you've been told you're not welcome at this table, or maybe you uh, think that there's something you're supposed to believe that you don't, Maybe you're not a member of this church or any church. Maybe you haven't been baptized. Whatever it is, maybe you've done something that if you could, you'd give the world to take it back. And you're sure that though the grace of God extends over the whole universe, it might pass you by. Know this, on that night there was one with Jesus who denied him, one who betrayed him. All the rest would abandon him before the night was out. We believe if he would eat with them, he would eat with us. All you have to be to come to this table is hungry for the love. God. We receive communion like this. We'll make two lines coming down the center. We will have two stations with gluten bread and cups. We'll also have the gluten free on the table. You'll receive a piece of bread, dip it into the cup, and consume both elements together, and then make your way back around through the side aisles back to your seat. See if it can all go smoothly. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to invite the deacons to come up. We've got some excited folks over here who are ready to eat. <laughs> and uh, so come now to the feast for all things are ready.
And now let us join together in our unison prayer of thanksgiving. Host of hosts, receiving Jesus at his table means keeping food on our minds and in our hands. Well fed and grateful, send us into the world that waits in aching hope for bread and justice multiplied, ready to serve and forever praising your name. Amen. And now let us rise and join in singing, Come, O Font of Every Blessing, number 459. As we go out into the world, may we be like bread, broken and shared, bringing sustenance and hope to those in need. May we be filled with joy and peace that comes from knowing God and Christ, the bread of life. May God's presence be with us always, guiding and sustaining us on the journey. We ask all of this in the name of Christ, and let the whole church say, Amen. Amen. Sure. 